So Todd, what got you interested in biology? Oh, I've always been interested in biology. I can't remember a time when I wasn't. I remember, you know, three, four years old, going to the Brookfield Zoo in Chicago and the, the Detroit Zoo and being pulled around in a little red wagon, you know, with my parents and looking at all the animals. Uh -huh. It was amazing. And it was just an amazing thing. And I just sort of knew there was always going to be these kinds of creatures in my future somehow. Todd, when we walk around a zoo like this, uh, I mean, the first thing is just the beauty of all of these creatures. But that beauty seems to be found in that diversity. There is just so much uh, difference, uh, a beautiful difference in all those creatures. And yet there's something similar about them. As a biologist, what do you see when you see all of these creatures? Yeah, when I look at these lions specifically, I'm seeing cats myself and, you know, all the other cats they have here at the zoo. They all have this underlying catness to them that's really apparent. It's really apparent when they start playing, right? You're seeing them lick themselves and clean themselves or you're seeing them playing with some sort of ball or something and they look they're just like a cat. They look like a cat. I mean, this uh -huh. is like kittens play around and they do that sort of thing. And so for those kinds of things, the scientists would put that into a family called Felidae. And I would understand the Felids to be representatives of a single created kind. So the continuity, the similarity there is so significant that I'd say, yeah, these guys have all descended from a single pair of critters that was on the ark and that eventually generated all the different sorts of cats that we have today. Well, Todd, how do we get all of that diversity? Yeah, they're cats, but they look different. Yeah, they how definitely look different. That's a good question. Where do we get all this diversity? So for an evolutionist, of course, they would argue that it's natural selection and many years of mutations and changes. But for a creationist, I'm looking at this thinking, these designs are already built into whatever cat came off the ark with Noah. And over time, then, those characteristics have been expressed as the cats have dispersed and spread out over the world. Just like we see in dogs, yeah, all kinds of dogs. How does that? Dogs are a great analogy. I mean, in only a few hundred years, we've taken essentially a wolf-like creature and turned it into all these crazy breeds, the Chihuahua and the St. Bernard and the German Shepherd. And I think that's kind of what's going on here with the cats. There's, within that cat that came off the ark, those two cats that came off the ark, they had all the potential necessary to generate the various forms of cats that we have today. It was just a matter of breeding it out and dispersing the, dispersing the cats around the world. And as they went then, then you have the lions and the tigers showing up later on. So originally the, the cat and the original dog, uh, they, there was a lot of potential then within them, but Huge genetic potential. potential? Huge genetic potential, all programmed inside of these critters, mm -hmm. just waiting to come out. So that over time, in the, in the breeding that we've done with dogs, we're basically just kind of uh, separating some of those genes out, is that right? Yeah, yeah, so, so there's that, all that potential that's in the dog kind, in the dog genome, whatever it is, mm -hmm. that gets expressed as we sort of tease out different parts of various genetic traits and combinations. Mm -hmm. You get Dalmatians and whatever. Uh, that's the same sort of thing that's happening here with the lions. So rather than just uh, an, a random accident, it appears as if all of these different species are coming from a really elaborate <laughs> design. Oh, absolutely. And it's not just a design like God you know, designed and created the lion, it's God created something that could make a lion. Mm -hmm. So it's more like you know, a multi-tool or a Swiss army knife where you got all these pieces that you can just pop out whenever you need them, but it's all just one thing. That's exactly what I think God mm -hmm. created cats to be like. You have these traits that can come out when they're needed. Uh, we can see some of these variations come out even today. So you take a, a lion here, you cross it with a tiger, you'll get a liger. But that thing will be much bigger than either of its parents. So those are traits that come out. And the beautiful thing is, even amidst all this variety and variation and generating diversity, you can still end up with this cat, right? So you end up with a liger that's a real cat, it works. You know, it, it's not like these are broken things or degenerated things. They're the real deal. The amount of design that we're talking about here is just way more than just God making one critter fit for one place. It's making a critter that can make other critters that are fit for 
places that we've maybe, maybe not even encountered before. And it's just an amazing design. It's so much bigger than what we used to think of as design. Huh. 